Yay. Okay. So um, we've got a pretty good audience set up in here. So just so you guys know, this inter um, our playback of the interview will be available on both of our channels. You can check it out in both of our bios. Um, Big Bag Bear, yeah, you are just in time. So I pulled questions from comments and also just some questions based on like discourse that was happening that people are most curious about. Um, so if you're fine to jump right in, Alicia, I am. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So for those who don't know, this is Alicia G. She's Alicia G. World across all social media channels. Um, she was featured on season four, episode one of Wife Swap, which featured a super feminist family versus a pageant family. And so she's here to tell, answer questions and give us the tea for what it was really like to be on reality TV. Um, behind the scenes stuff and the, the aspects of the show that we didn't see. So um, my, uh, the first question is, how did your family find out about Wife Swap to be on it? And by the way, y'all wanted a show, so I might as well give you a show, right? I, I want to see the treat. I honestly love that you brought props from the show. Honestly, I'm here for it. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well get some views. Yes, this really is. I want to bring out. This is the famous Christmas everyday Christmas tree. Oh my God! And yes, we do have a Christmas tree. Twenty four seven, three sixty five. Gorgeous. Yes, but it's not what you think. And we're gonna get into that. Yeah. But yes, I love pageant tree. Yeah, These the like the that. Christmas tree is one of the questions that we'll get to for sure because people were asking about that, and I think that was one of the most uh, probably surprising aspect of the show so um yeah so how did your family end up on wife swap what was the audition process how did y'all find out about it okay so when I was growing up I did a tremendous amount of activities I mean tap jazz ballet gymnastics cheerleading voice lessons piano lessons pageantry I did everything in one of my dance classes, one of my dance teachers came up to me. She was actually the coach of the Buffalo Jills. Um, Buffalo Jills were the NFL cheerleaders for the Buffalo Bills, mm -hmm. no longer around. But she had some connections, whatnot, casting calls. And she announced it one day and was like, um, you know, I got this casting call for any families who may want to be interested in her participating in a reality show. I'm like, okay. You know, I was like, okay, sure. Tell me another one. But they want children who have um, very unusual activities or do a lot of that activity. Something really unique. Not like the everyday child. Okay. Mm -hmm. A little unusual. A little different. And we're just like, okay, sure. And they said it's for wife swap. This is the funny thing. We never seen the show. Really? We didn't know what the show was. Nothing. We're just like... Sure, okay. Didn't even phase us. The dance teacher, after we're like walking out, oh, you, you got audition. No, no, we're good, we're good. No, please, please, you know, begging us. I'm like, well, you know, <laughs> my mom gave him the email. Here's her email. If there's any interest, let us know. Mm -hmm. I think it was two or three days after they emailed us, they wanted some pictures of like what I do, like the beauty pageants, uh, you know, it was everything, a little cheerleading, this, this, and this. Within like the next day they, they called us and they're like, we're really interested. They talked to us on the phone. And like the following day, they're like, that weekend, we're gonna come down and film you for a test uh, run. Like, okay. So, like, not even a week later, they come down, they film us. The next day, they're like, we have to have your family. What they film you on like, doing? What? Did they come to your home, or did they just ask y'all questions they and have you come to a studio? They actually, they actually flew someone out, I believe, from the New York City area. Don't quote me. I believe it's New York City area. They flew someone out, filmed us for, like, 10, 12 hours, and they loved us. Within the next day, like, we have to have your family watch on the show. Okay. 
two weeks later, we were filming the show. <laughs> it wow. was like overnight. That's fast. So then it was a with. how long did filming take? Filming was actually, I want to say seven or eight days. Really? So the whole like that week is- one is my thing and then week two we switch it up. So how long was like did y'all have to live by the feminist mom's rules? Like how many days? Um I know it's forever ago, so you can remember. Maybe like three days. Wow. It's ladies and gentlemen, it's scripted. There is no reality on reality TV. And the thing is, oh reality TV, it has to be real. News flash. Alert, alert, alert. There is no reality on reality TV. Guys, girls, think about it. If you were just to sit there and let's say they're going to film your family, what do you do? Okay, the whole family, we're eating dinner. Okay, we're going to watch a TV. Okay, we're going to play with the dog. Mm-hmm. Is that exciting? No, so they have to create. Well, I think a lot they of people by now know the that they drama. create the drama, but I think what people are shocked at was just like the fact that it's scripted. So were you guys warned or informed ahead of time that you were going to have to like have lines? No. So how did that, what did that look like? Let me change my crowns, crowns a little heavy. Okay. <laughs> so, honestly, I, y'all want to play, we all play some game right now. I don't know. A little lighter one. I'm just having fun with y'all now. I seriously, I yes, I love pageants. It doesn't define me as a person, but I love pageants. I think I that's fine. You can have your life's passion. Yeah, yeah. Oh, with it, right? Yeah. I'm so sorry. Can you repeat the question one more time? You're totally I fine. Totally no, no, no. It's, it's all good. So um, we're talking about the whole concept of it being scripted. So I'm curious to know if you guys knew ahead of time that you were going to be thrust into this whole fake scenario. Absolutely not. Wow. <laughs> so when, so did they give you guys like, did they have a script written out ahead of time or was it on the fly? The producers are behind the camera telling you what to say. There is no, like, here's a script, memorize it. It's not like that. Okay. But the producer, director, whatnot, the staff, they all had little books. And in their little books, their notebooks, whatnot. Um, I remember it so frequently, like, um, I was just yesterday, the head director, producer, he had this book, and it was a spiral notebook, mm-hmm. and he had a picture of, like, three little stick figures, Okay. You know how to draw a stick figure, a little person. Three little, one, two, three. And then a bigger picture of a girl in a dress and a big crown on her head. And they read off of that book. Okay. And that was basically the script that they read and storyboarded whatnot. So it'd be this amazing, elaborated, over the top, oh my God type of show. Uh huh. It was more so like, okay, Alicia, I need you to say, this isn't this. Go. Huh? I like you don't really agree. What? You need to incorporate these words in some way, shape, or form. And we would do anywhere from two and three, four takes just till it was perfect. And over that's and over crazy. again, meeting after me, line after line. How did it feel when you realized that they weren't just going to be filming you guys organically, but you were going to have to say what they wanted you to say, even the obnoxious things that you didn't necessarily feel or agree with? Like, think about like, you're this young little kid and you're like, oh my God, I want to be a movie star. Mm -hmm. I want to be on TV. I want to be in Hollywood. I want to be famous. You blank that all out. When you have, in your house, you have these huge cameras, you have your own mic, microphone mic'd up, lights, everything, uh, seven, eight, ten people running through your house, runners, you're just going to blur like, oh my God, it doesn't feel real. Yeah. Because guess what, guys? It's not real. That's the reality. There is no reality. 
because the real reality would be not that exciting. That's the reality. So they have to make it. They make it for views and ratings. And I get it. I respect it from a business perspective. They wanted those views. They wanted the ratings. And guess what? They got them. Was any and part of your episode authentic? Um, I did do beauty pageants. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of activities. Um, I really have a mom. I really have a dad. I have a, I have a dog. I have two dogs, actually. Mm -hmm. um, but when we say authentic, you got to break it down. Sure. There's so many different aspects. That's too broad. So okay, break it sure, down. we can break it down. So I'm curious, like, um, I'll just, like, name a random encounter. So let's talk about when she ripped your picture. Well, why don't we start from the beginning? Like, break it down from the start. Move it up. Or do you want to start from there? We can start from the beginning. So then how about you walk us through the episode then and tell us what parts were real and what parts weren't. It's a blur. So you got to like, So in the beginning, they talked about, okay, they introduced your family and your dad said that he would never hire someone that, um, that he would rather hire someone that was pretty over someone who was smart. That's how your family was introduced. The narrator like said, sexist Ralph. And then, yeah. Now when you say sexist, Ralph, that was not my dad's terms, my mom's terms, nor my terms. That was the show for ratings. Sure. They got to spice it up. They're not going to watch a boring show. That's the reality. Yeah, I, I, think we've, I think we've got that. I think what everyone is most curious to know is like, no, was my dad's every way. single word that you guys said on the show fed to you guys? Or was it a mixture of, the producers are going to create this scenario to get a reaction, but you're not reacting the yeah. way that we want. So instead we want you to say this, you know, like that's what people are like mostly curious about is how much of reality TV is scripted and how much of it is the producers creating bullshit scenarios. And then just, they, they just watch y'all react. Like it's kind of hard to I mean, I, get the full understanding. I can't speak, obviously, for every reality TV show. I can't. I was not on every reality show. Yeah, we're asking you about guys, yours. I, I know, but I'm just saying a general statement. The shows that I were on, so example, Voice Swap, it was like, we would, what was your reaction? Da, 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 you say it. Mm -hmm. Hey, that was good, but we need you to put it more like this. Uh-huh. You know, why don't we incorporate, like, this word and this word? And we do it over and over till it was right where they cut good. and paste to make it that wow shock factor. Okay. So then like, for instance, the scene where your mom called that girl a geek, they made her say that. Okay. On my mom's side of the, of Y swap. Yeah. Um, they said they needed more fighting. They need more John. It was really boring. Wow, um, so they son. explicitly said that. They have no shame. They, like, Karen, you gotta start a fight. Wow. What? And when, because my mom did not want to stay in that house, example. They, it was not that, it wasn't the cleanest. Nothing wrong with that. No one has a perfect house. No one's perfect. She says, I want to stay in a hotel. I've had it. And she didn't feel comfortable. She did not feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they're like, no, you can't leave the house. Mom's like, no, I don't want to stay here. And they're like, well, we'll make you an agreement. If you want to stay in a hotel, we'll let you. If, if you start a fight with the family, call them names, etc. Wow. Like my mom wanted Starbucks. It's just, they, well, I, 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 I think all, the lack of morality is what's shocking. Um, I know it's the, fake and stuff, but to threaten someone um, with their the, own comfortability the to get what they want all is the, kind of crazy. All the runners, uh, the staff, the crew, they had Starbucks. My mom wanted a Starbucks. I remember her saying, and she's, oh, can I have a Starbucks? No. Wait, what? Why can't I have a Starbucks? And I'm offered even to pay to give them money for a Starbucks. You got to start a fight, Karen. It's, there's no drama. There's no action. Like, she was forced to start a fight. With or she couldn't get started. So then did she get to choose the kind of fight she would pick with somebody, or? Um, 
I don't know. I was on that side. You were on that so side, I yeah. I'm just that's curious, fun. yeah. Um, yeah stay for home. I think the, the whole stuff. goal is to like get a lot of drama but then also paint people in a specific light and so I just didn't know if you guys wanted to like clear the air because a lot of the discourse online revolves around how harshly the feminist child was treated I think her name was Kaylin like being called a geek and making her cry and stuff so I just didn't know if that was part of the scripted too because when you're telling me this is scripted I'm like well I hope that part was because that was hard it was scripted after but they don't tell the child oh she's gonna call you that not yeah to get after. a react to get a genuine reaction not- right so that happened on your end too like the feminist mom was me she i think she bullied you the whole episode oh did, she told me did you she know did not- that she was being no, she- told to bully you or did you not know until after production um i i just got that feeling like cameras on or cameras off she did not like me mm. she didn't like anything to do with god forbid pageants god forbid makeup god forbid dressing up dance class she didn't like that stuff she nothing wrong with being a feminist uh, feminist but she was judging you she totally just thought oh blonde hair oh spray tan oh this she's fake yeah she didn't give a chance she just judged right off right off the bat so what was it like when the cameras cut? Did she ever apologize or say she felt bad? Or was she, it was it awkward after being mean to each other on camera and then the cameras stop and now it's like, what do we do? Like when you get to the part about um, the, the picture, okay? Mm-hmm. It's the iconic picture that was ripped. I freaked out. I, I cried. Um, I was real upset. That picture meant a lot to me. I, yeah. That's like one of my achievements. I worked so hard doing beauty pageants. And we'll get into that too. But she ripped it up. I, I just, I lost it. I lost it. I, I really was upset. I was pushed to that breaking point. I mean, I, I really upset. I cried. Yeah. But then I think, I think it was that night. Don't quote me the time frame. It's like a blur still. So that night, the night after, cameras are off we're sleeping okay and she's like alicia i want to say i am so sorry i go sure you are like okay you ripped up my picture Mm -hmm. you know she goes that wasn't your picture i go yes it was what are you talking about that that's my picture alicia they all made copies of every single picture they told me to rip it up so all the originals you have i go really just, they did not want me to tell you that, but I felt so bad doing it. So with, That's I, was, I wonder felt if, bad doing yeah, she, I mean, she clearly felt guilty. So maybe she didn't dislike you that much, or maybe that was a boundary within herself that she didn't feel comfortable crossing. But it I seems like if the cameras aren't there to go and, you know, tell you, I'm sorry. Like, I feel like I would agree. I would think it was fake if the cameras were still rolling. But the fact that she did that with no one watching, do you think it was authentic or what do you think her goal was for that or her intention? I, I think she truly actually did feel bad, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. Um, wow. So speaking of other moments, when you guys did the rule of switch, in addition to ripping your picture, she also took away your Christmas tree. And I see some people are joining and asking the questions. Oh, she has the tree. Like, what's going on with the tree? So please give us the backstory of the tree and how it was portrayed in the show. What was real and what wasn't. Okay, yes. I really do have a Christmas tree up year-round. It's Christmas every day. No, it's not Christmas every day. They spun that into disaster. Okay. Um, My grandmother who I was extremely close to. I even called her mama, my grandmother. Mm -hmm. I love my, um, she helped raise me from day one. After her her favorite holiday was Christmas. Okay. After she passed away, we left it up in her memory Mm -hmm. as like her spirit still with us and like a happy memory. Like, I'll look here, I'll look there, I'll look here. Oh, grandma's still here in spirit cheering us on, you know? Yeah. Each and everything. 
And they went as far as wrapping up little lip gloss, little purse, whatever they wrapped up, wrapped it up, gave it to my mom, had her put it under the tree and say, what did you get me today for Christmas, mama? I mean, that's how over the top fake it is. So, um, were there ever a moment in filming where you or your parents on either side of wherever filming was taking place that you know of that said, I don't want to do that too far. Disrespectful. No. Um, it was a negotiation. You signed the contract. Yeah. You're stuck. Yeah. I figured they would throw that in your face. So was the Christmas tree a moment of like, no, I don't want to I, turn that into It was like, else. oh my God, we got so upset. We literally packed her bags up. That was our own thing. That was not the staff. That was not the crew saying, you need to pack her bags up. That was Big Papa. My dad mm -hmm. and me were like, goodbye. And don't forget her shoes, daddy. And we threw her out the door. So that part was real. Oh, that was real. I will, That was a thousand percent real. Mm -hmm. Um the staff, the crew had to beg us, mm -hmm. beg us mm -hmm. to bring her back into the house. We did, we were done with her. Did they threaten you if you wouldn't have? Did they say like you breached your contract or was it like they just begged and that worked mm -hmm. enough though? And they just begged and begged me to negotiate Emotions. back and forth, negotiate, can't cross this, can't do this, you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. We'll give Angie a chance, you know, so. Do you think that she, did Angie know what the tree was really for? Or do you think she believed what the producers told her about you just being this kid that gets Christmas every day? She probably thought it was Christmas. I don't even think she really knew the story because we didn't have a chance to tell her that. That's what she assumed. God. Wow. Did you have any inclination that, you know, because you're, now going into filming, you're seeing that they're manipulating everything and they're kind of strong arming you guys into doing things you're not comfortable with and having you say things that you don't really mean. Did you guys have any idea that you would be portrayed in the light that you were? No, no. So nothing really prepared y'all for that? Nothing. And you don't see it until it airs the first sure. time live. Yeah. So you have no idea what's going to happen. Um, they change it. They cut piece together they make it a show for ratings mm -hmm. and that's the reality there's really no reality on reality tv yeah um but i'm just curious but, i know I, I got that part but i'm just curious if going through the experience if you had a feeling of like oh this might not air that well because they have me saying things that i don't agree with or i don't really feel this is all fake i wonder what they're gonna do or were you guys just kind of like well this is what it is we didn't know. We never thought it'd be that bad yeah. in a billion years. But in the, in our head going into this, okay, it's TV, meaning it's like acting. We, we, just, we had in our head going into, Alicia, it's just acting. So whatever it is, is pretend you're on a set somewhere and we're just, you're doing the part. And mm -hmm. I became part of what they portrayed me. And it's, yeah. I am nothing of the sort of that yeah and the agr me if you guys are in the house boom boom baby you guys know who i am you guys spend literally anywhere from eight to ten hours a day with me almost every single day they know the real me yeah which is beautiful so um the show portrayed you as you sing on the theme of the show lying and basically being a bunch of bullshit um they portrayed you as someone who never did their own homework. And when Angie had you do her women's history project thing, um, said that you had trouble with spelling and just education stuff all around. So can you speak to that? Oh, I definitely can. Okay. Everyone here in this broadcast, I want you to think, do you ever get nervous ever in front of people? Ever. Does anyone, I, I don't even look at your comments right now, to be honest, in the comments, does anyone ever get nervous? Do you ever get nervous ever speaking or talking, doing anything? 
Me personally, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. Humans get nervous and humans get anxiety, okay. especially in social think, situations, for sure. Think of filming anywhere from ten to twelve to fourteen hours a day, um, for like eight days straight. Yeah, and think of a camera less than two feet away from you staring at you lights a whole crew around you microphone and everything would you ever mess up right it was a mistake like you're texting i used to speak to text all the time like what the hell did i just say mm -hmm. like you know it just like i just not even thinking about it like think about a camera in your face two three feet away from you sure you're not allowed to mess up. And they take the one time you mess up and they magnify it. Oh, she's dumb. Newsflash, I'm not. I actually graduated with a 95.878 uh, GPA in high school with honors. Holy, what, and were you taking like only my... AP classes or something? Um, just, I did a few, but um, just, I, that's I was crazy. smart. I yeah, that's smart. like super high. I actually went to, um, they called it BOCES, a trade school or whatnot, mixed in with my regular high school. Hmm. And I went for dental lab technology, uh -huh. where I was first in my class for all two years of it. So that explains your dad saying that you were going to be a dentist, because that's literally what you were going to school for. I Which they did to, not mention I, the whole I episode. Love, I, know, I love um, to make someone smile mm -hmm. I feel everyone in this world deserves to be truly happy and there's nothing wrong that I love to see someone smile like in my daily broadcast on Beagle Live when I have someone say I wish I had a, I had a bad day I came to your broadcast because I need a boost of positivity that just makes my day mm -hmm. like that's beautiful I made that smile and people make fun of me because of my teeth aren't perfect or this or this not ever has a perfect smile hey newsflash i got braces mm -hmm. and my teeth are perfect boom boom baby yeah but like seriously a teen doesn't always have perfect teeth right. how many people have had a brace you're making fun of someone's teeth yeah a little kid's teeth that's just sick mm -hmm. i mean why don't cut down another human individual it's like usually what happens is what I came across, because I've been bullied through living hell and back. We'll get into that aspect. Yeah, too. that's like the next line of question. We're right on schedule. But basically, like, I've noticed a lot of the people who try to cut down on the human individual, it's usually someone who's actually very sad and depressed. Mm -hmm. And they're so sad and depressed. Oh, they think, oh, I'm going to make myself feel better. I'm going to cut down someone else and someone else and someone else. And really, they're actually more sad inside. For sure. It's really sad. And you know, when someone cuts me down, I don't cut them down. I, I go, you know, I wish you the best. Peace, love, positivity, and I hope you find peace with yourself. Love it. And two wrongs do not make a right. They right. do not. So, speaking of bullies. Well, do you want to get into the restaurant scene? How fake that was? Yeah, we can. Sure. Um go for it so in the rest of hey, people who may not know all social media hit that bell for notifications subscribe to my youtube channel i hope you're all enjoying the why swap reveal Tell there we all. go so um okay. the so people who may need a little refresher because i also some people on this live may have only seen the highlights that i put on my page and that was a scene that i did not include um so they portrayed you as someone who was rude to wait staff in the beginning of the swap. So the feminist mom was like horrified by, you know, um, the way that you were talking to wait staff and your dad kind of laughed it off. So before we jump into your experience being a waiter for a day on the show, was that any of that real? Were lines being said to you? Take us there. Um, I will admit, I was like, we were, going 24 7 our family. We, we did not have home-cooked meals. We did not. We literally did eat out almost seven days a week. Mm -hmm. this, that's the truth. Or if we didn't uh, go out to a restaurant, we had takeout. We were, we were restaurant people. 
Um, when I was little, I'm not gonna lie, I sometimes was not the nicest to, wa to waitresses. I was not always, but I mean, every, you're gonna say a little kid is always perfect 100% of the time. Sure, I'm asking about the scene when- um... I, I'm, get, I'm getting to that, I'm getting to that. But okay. like my response to that, I was not always 100% you know, the most pleasant. I mean, they, they pushed me though. And this is what I mean by push me. The, the day, I mean, I'm always nice to staff. Okay. I am, I swear to God, I know I'm always nice to staff. Uh, I was a bartender for years. Um, yeah, my license is bartending, but you know, I wasn't always 100% the sweetest, but I was not that bad. I was never that bad. Sure. The show magnified that. Okay, so like when I was so called the waitress for the day, I was doing a good little job. But then but wait, wait, the wait, 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 no, 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 hold on. Before, because the reason why the show justified making you be a waitress for a day was because they showed a scene where you were being rude to the waitress. So my question was, was that someone behind this camera saying, look, you're being too nice to this chick. You need to no. say this. Were lines being fed to you or were you not having the best day and you were rude to this? Like what happened there? Alicia, let's be a little uh, brattier. You can do it. Come on. Mm -hmm. So then, okay. So um, now take us to. I, I want it like crunchy where it is crunches, but like not really. I added that part. That was like my own, but like. Yeah. Yeah. We, that we yeah, were being like, coached. We, uh, like throughout almost every scene, Alicia, we want, come on, Alicia, act, you can do this, act more bratty. Come on, Alicia, just uh, remember, you always said you want to be famous. You always said you want to be on, um, you know, the big screen, be a movie star. And I'm this little kid thinking like, yeah, I, I want to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can do it. Yeah, I can get in the part. You can do it. want more bratty. You can do it. Bring it, Alicia. You can do it. You ready? You ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. You know, okay. and I believe that I did. Okay. That's the sad part. Yeah. I fell into the trap. So then now the whole like, sorry, um, go ahead. Me being the waitress for the day, me crying. Yeah. I did cry. You know why? They don't tell you this part, do they? Mm -hmm. Newsflash. Nope, they don't. They ended up, the waitress who's like kind of like training me, okay, whatnot. Mm -hmm. They ended up paying her, I want to say like, two three hundred dollars i don't know the exact amount but they paid her two three hundred dollars to go when the cameras weren't showing this part to say you little bitch you this you did it you'll never be a dentist i was like huh like they she she ripped me a new one this person when the cameras weren't around I, no, they paid her to do that how did you find that out uh after we were leaving she's letting you know I'm not that bad. I'm so sorry. And they actually kind of paid me to do that. Wow. We just were like, we're and so that's that. why you were crying because you were being that, yeah, verbally they, harassed they off camera. camera. So ripped a new one. This little teen has ripped a new one and get back out there. Huh? Like anyone would be upset. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oh, and I want to well, actually take a sip of water. Excuse me. Yeah, take your time. Take your water. You're fine. Um, so what was it like so, when you guys sat down? I'm sorry. Did you have more to say about the restaurant scene? Um, I think that pretty much covers that. Okay. Before we jump into what life was like after um, the, the... I want to talk about the spray tan scene. The what scene? Spray tan. Okay, sure. The spray tan. They had it all set up for Angie to spray tan, just my legs, my arms, okay? Mm -hmm. She goes, I will not spray tan her. What? Mm -hmm. And my dad's like, I'm not spray tanning her. Can you, you know, one of the staff members? He's like, the, the, no, we can't have the staff in there. What, what do you mean? Well, you, you're a father, it's okay. They made my father do that. My father would never, ever, ever, mm -hmm. Look at me, let alone touch me, let alone spray tan me. Sure. We had to have a scene. They thought it'd be a real iconic scene to make my dad look awful. She refused to do it. Did she say why she refused to do it? Was it a feminist ideology or? I'm not sure. She just didn't feel, 
she didn't like pageants and that's fine not everyone I'm not saying y'all love pageants I'm not that type of person oh y'all love pageants she didn't like them I respect that but she was just like you're doing this show can you go with the flow a little bit I mean come on it's mm -hmm. not gonna kill you do you think that she was this as extreme knowing that they made y'all they fabricated y'all story do you think that her story was also fabricated was she as extreme as they portrayed her I don't want to put words in her mouth or the family's mouth. Um, from what I heard, they were very strict. They had very strict rules. Mm -hmm. Like on a daily basis, they're home with schools mm -hmm. and whatnot. Um, I'm sure it was magnified. I don't want to say how because I'm not positive. I don't want to speak to someone else, but um, everything's magnified. But of she did not have passions at all. Yeah. She felt very strongly about that. It's interesting. Um, were there any other scenes that you wanted to clear the air about from your episode? Anyone have any questions in the comments here? Because it's like a blur sometimes. Anything? Has? I don't see any questions so much. I did see someone ask if you've watched the episode yourself just now, um, which was my next question. It was, what was it like the first time you guys sat down to watch the episode um, we as a family my mom dad and me we had obviously we never seen the show we had a major reveal party at uh buffalo wild wings mm -hmm. it's a chain restaurant you might have heard of it and we probably had close to 100 people there thinking oh, okay this is gonna be fun it's entertaining hey our family's on a reality show da 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 the the news crews are there, everything. I think they're watching. I, I'm like, this can't be real. Mm. This, this is, I, I was speechless. How did it feel? I'm sorry, what? How did it feel? Not real. Yeah. Like a, bad dream like no just what was it like going back to school after that I need another sip of water uh take your time and if there's any you know if there's any you know traumatizing questions or you know driving diving back into that part of your life that's painful just let me know and we can divert I want you to be comfortable thank god we wear a crown every day y'all wanted to see a crown I know y'all want to see a tree I'm just I'm just feeling your fantasy now with this crown the tree i'm having fun with y'all i really don't i think people appreciate the props from the show honestly i do oh i got my handbag oh it's downstairs i should bring it remember the iconic handbag with your face all over was that really your handbag or was that like a prop from the show oh, no, that's me. That's me. um doing beauty pageants um one of the categories was photogenic etc and all the other mothers all had purses of their daughters. Mm -hmm. And mom's like, everyone has a purse of their daughter. Hey, I want a purse of my daughter, too. It's a horse and pony show, y'all. It's a horse and pony show. The 2000s um, was a wild time for fashion. Uh, but it's, it's a really pretty bag. I'm not going to lie. It's a pretty bag. But uh, going back to school. Okay. That night it aired. From my understanding, I was told by numerous people, and don't quote me, quote me, but almost positive, I was the second most Googled name in the United States besides Britney Spears. Holy shit. Um, I went through living hell overnight my life changed mm -hmm. okay like you cannot i'm so sorry no you're it okay a lot. you're okay David, take you're your time and again tell me if you want to talk about something else i don't want to re-traumatize no, you by I any want, means i want this world. i really do because people think oh my life is so perfect or this or this or and I don't understand the backlash that I have it. Mm -hmm. 
Give me one second, guys. I'm sorry. Take your time. I think that's why people, you know, have so many questions about the personally as I make documentaries and so there's a lot of work and intention that goes into before I film someone and making sure that they're comfortable and making sure they know the questions ahead of time and just wanting everything to be super authentic. Mind you, I'm not making reality TV shows. I'm making, you know, socially conscious work to impact the way the world that we live in. So I struggle watching shows like Wife Swap and that's why I started this series and I analyzed the fuck out of everything to kind of bring about some sort of compassion because the lack of morality that exists I don't think people understand the long-term damage that falsifying situations and coaching people into acting and saying certain things and creating lies <laughs> to fit this specific story plot that's going to get them ratings for this season and then they're moving on to the next project while the very real people that participated in it now have to deal with long-term effects, you know? So, um when we talk about like what was fake, what was real, it, I hope that it paints a picture for people to see that the morality of these reality shows can really come into question, especially back in the early 2000s because reality, reality TV was relatively new. And so we were all rather young watching these shows having absolutely no idea it was fabricated. So they painted you and your family in some very particular way that people were not into. And so the backlash, I don't think people understand the backlash that can come from all of this. Um, that clearly can impact you years later. They portrayed me as this spoiled, bratty, rude, careless, heartless, dumb individual, mm -hmm. fake, and I am nothing of the sort. Um, literally, yes, I was Googled like crazy. Um, literally, the next day back at school from, and by the way, news alert, I was never popular. I was never popular. They just did that to make me sound like, oh my God, she's a popular child. I was not popular. I'm about shocked us. to hear that. I got to tell you, because we're around the same age and girls that were in beauty pageants and dressed as cute as you did and had great makeup and nice teeth after braces and blonde hair were always popular. And you seem like such a bubbly, likable person. You weren't popular. But why not? Why weren't you popular? I was, um, People liked me, whatnot. I was always like, oh, hi, that's Alicia. Nice, to, you know, nothing wrong. The day after the show hit, no one would talk to me. Like, I did not exist. Even friends, like people that you were friends with before, because, you know, there's a difference between being popular and then, like, having, like, no friends. So you had friends. And your friends turned their back I, on you as well? Never, I was never popular, popular. But I, I had always a few friends, but yeah, the day I, no one would talk to me. As not even, like, civilly, but they would call me names. I never knew names existed so badly. People like, wow, you really are like that. Oh, my God, you're... I am saying, you're a rich bitch, you're this, you're that, you're that, F you. I could not even eat in the lunchroom. I had food thrown at me. I, I was called every name in the book. I didn't know names existed that bad. And even in the classrooms, people would be calling me names. I was physically pushed into lockers. I... Um, my books thrown at me, uh, pushed in the hallway, whatnot. It got so bad, I was literally eating lunch in the teacher's room. It was one of the teachers in the principal's office. Not because I was doing any bad, just because I had somewhere to eat safe. <laughs> and it went as bad as being uh, pushed down a flight of stairs in school. And it was a guy, it was a, it was a guy who pushed me. It was a guy who pushed me, like, 
what? Seriously? And he ran, obviously, real quick. Miraculously, this football player, he, I was like, ah, oh, you know, you hear someone maybe yelling, like, ah, oh, I'm falling on the stairs. And the guy, the football player, he caught me. He's like, oh my God, are you okay? He goes, yeah. I'm like, thank you. The guy, I, I, I could have broke, right? I could have, like, totally got seriously injured. He caught me. And he got me up. He said, you need the nurse, anything? You good? You good? He goes, yeah, thank you. Thank you. He's like, okay. Now just remember, Alicia, don't tell anyone that I helped you. Wow. That's, That's how, how bad it was. So-called popular girls. Don't be friends with Alicia. Oh, my God. Don't go to the dance with Alicia. Like, seriously? You're going to listen to girls? So when the crew oh, came back, did they make you say, because you said you were going to junior prom, even though you were, like, a sophomore or something? Oh, this is a friend who took me. Oh, okay. This is a friend, like, okay. Yeah. Um, I thought they made you say that, too. I was going to say, Jesus. <laughs> no, I a friend who needed a date. And I was like, yeah, let's go. That's fun. But that wasn't even the worst part. It was, like, Literally, we had cherry bombs in our mailbox, mm. ate our house, ate, um, our cars, uh, paintballed, all that type of stuff. It went as far as like literally, a, like, as you call it, a hate crime. And this is what I mean. Um, let's see. Everyone for is watching i hope you're enjoying what really happened people are showing a really lot of compassion for you in the comments i will say thank you yeah um, it went as far as basically you call it a hate crime um i was at a local ice cream place with my dad we're getting ice cream my one so-called i thought was a friend mm -hmm. texted me hey we're outside. Do you want to stop by, say hey in the car? They're, they're in the car. And I'm like, yeah, sure. I'm like, hey, d um, dad, um, I just want to say hi to my friends. Okay, I got the ice cream. I'll meet you in the car. I went to the car. There was a driver, driver passenger. So a guy, a guy, and three girls in the back. And the three girls in the back were like all like ducking down. I'm like, what? Like, where, where is she? Like, I'm asking, where is she? And the driver passenger was like, aren't you going to shake my hand? He's, hi, I'm such and such. I'm like, okay, hi. Aren't you going to shake my hand? Are you really that rude like everyone says you are from White Swap? I'm like, where is such and such? Really? I got to shake my hand? Like, okay. I went to like this. He was like this. Grab my wrist. Yells to the driver, drive! Drag me close to 12 feet on pavement mm. where I had secondary burns in my body. Oh. I'm so sorry that happened to you. Thank you. Yeah, that sounds absolutely horrible and painful. Did those and people go to jail? Were they charged with a hate like crime? Uh, they were charged. It, there were some, some charges, some fines, but they were some very, very well-to-do family. And the driver was 18 mm -hmm. under the, the parents' insurance, whatnot. I had a phenomenal lawyer. Got them out of almost everything. They had to pay some heavy fines. Um, community service, this, this, and this, but no jail time. Wow. Um, it, it was a private um, a retreat type thing. But, like, literally, I, out of reaction, you're being dragged by a car here. I I guess I grabbed the guy's shirt. I, I, didn't, I didn't know what to do. I, you're, you just freak. I, I guess I grabbed the guy's shirt. And I remember the lawyers and the people were like, you dragged our client. And then... The lawyer was like, she ripped my client's shirt. 
hello? Like, if if they didn't let me go at the time and I wrapped my head on the cement, like, if here's the road and the curb, like the cement, I, they let me go just enough where I wrapped my head and I rolled back and I was like numb. And I, I'm there, I got up and I like walked to the car I was tears pouring down my, my eyes. And I said to my dad, I just was dragged by a car. He's what? And I looked, I didn't feel it. I had blood pouring down my legs and everything. And then I was like, um, I was rushed to the hospital. And they were picking gravel out of my body. That's like, you don't horrible. I'm so sorry that happened to you. Like, you don't understand how bad I was bullied. Have you had the, the, the time or space to process this, like, in therapy? Um, like, I'm not gonna lie, like, yes, I, I've been to uh, counselors, etc., whatnot. Um, I just know at the end of the day, I'm the bigger person because I didn't backlash and say, F you, F you, this, this. I didn't go crazy and like, sure. start down others. I just like, you know what? I hope you find peace. Yeah. You need help. There. I feel that. Like, I, my, yeah. Yeah. Two I, wrongs just don't make a right. At all. I just ask that because first, I just want to thank you for being so vulnerable and open. And again, I'll reiterate at any moment of us talking, if it's a little much, let me know. And we can either end or switch topics, something more light. Um, I ask because I think that there's, there's different types of people in the world when they experience abuse, bullying, or trauma from other people. And so there's people who hash out, like you just described it, other people, and they say, fuck you, fuck you to everyone else. And then there's people that are a little more gentle in the heart. And instead of sharing their pain with others they self-implode and so I just um I ask that not for the sake of the interview but more for your well-being as somebody who lives with PTSD um and have survived different types of trauma um it, it keeping it in and not having the time to process it can you know cause more issues later so I just I'm so no, thankful that you're being it. vulnerable but I just hope that you giving yourself the gift of healing and you know taking the space wherever you can find it to process this horrible shit that you've been through i, I think y'all seen the props enough i just i do love my crowns but do you do just, it. yeah you I, can take it off but do you like the crown guys when i see all the props? <laughs> it's actually really pretty it is this one is beautiful let me show you this one is beautiful guys Wow. Oh, it's like, oh, they're dangling. That's cute. Yeah, right? Love it. This is probably actually my favorite crown ever. I, I love think. it. Yeah, it's really nice. I don't know about you. I'd wear that shit every day if I had it. I'm a little extra, though. <laughs> Who is it? And when they say someone's normal, someone's perfect, what is normal? What is perfect? It's there all subjective. No yeah, it's, it's not a thing. Exactly. No one's perfect. And if everyone, everyone in the world was just so perfect, it'd be a really boring world. Yeah. Wouldn't it? Yeah. We talk about yeah. that a lot on this page. The concept the of normality. Of each person makes you you. Mm -hmm. There's no one perfect. Yeah. That's the reality. Is but there? Yeah. I, is, I, very depressed. I, I, uh, I had no friends. I, it sucked. It sucked. I went through living hell and back, but at the end of the day, it made me the person I am today. And I live by this saying, and I mean it. I start off every broadcast like this, every single day, push out negativity pushing the positivity, the best yet to come, just believe. Mm -hmm. And I set a goal. I set my eye on the prize, what I want to achieve, what I want to do, you know, 
the picture, this is what I want to do. I guess what do you call it, manifesting, whatever the term is. I, I set my eye, my, my vision, that's the goal. I want to achieve it. And guess what? I'm going to make it happen. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to let anyone get in the way of it. I don't take no for an answer. And I do it till I achieve that goal, till I see the light at the end of the tunnel. And that's I'll never, beautiful. ever take no for an answer or give up on my dream. That's like, wonderful. Another thing, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, back to like high school prom. Let's we'll go to high school prom. It's funny. No one would go to prom with me. So is this prom could, different from the junior prom after the show? Like this is like when you were a senior yourself? My senior prom. My senior prom. No one would go to prom with me. It came to the last day. Most girls, maybe not every girl, and that's fine, but most girls, they want to go to their senior prom. There's nothing wrong with that. And um, I was working out at a gym, and there's this one guy. He was always nice to me in the gym. And uh, Um, it was so nice to me always. I was like, hey, this is like probably a really random question, but would you be my prom date? And he's like, what? You know, thinking like, what's going on? Like, I go, look, okay, this is the reality. I'm a senior. I have a senior prom. All I ever wanted to do was, I just want to go to my senior prom. Would you please buy a prom date? He goes, no. I'm just like, come on. Oh, by the way, prior up to that, well, he had him going. I'll tell you how that happened, though. This doubt's another mind shocker. But I asked so many people, like, I'm sorry, Alicia, but I, I, I can't go to prom with you. I, I can't be seen with you. So many people. I asked so many people, just as a friend, please just go to my prom. No, no, no. So this guy finally has, like, please. I just want to go to prom. Please. And he's like, no, I'll go, I'll pay you. I'm like, what? Yes, I paid for my prom date. I paid for his tuxedo. I paid for the pictures. I paid for the prom, boutonniere, corsage, all that, my dress. And guess what? I finally had a prom date. He was nice. He wasn't that nice. But at least I could say I went to my senior prom. So... That's a lot on one person, especially at that part of your life when you're building your self-esteem, understanding your worldview. What effect did that have on you long-term? Because a lot of people were in the comments and when you look it up on Google, there's, you know, and it, if you're comfortable switching to this topic, but like you ended up on Dr. Phil. And so um, I'm super open-minded with this kind of stuff just because I know what it's like to suffer with like I've lived with an eating disorder my whole life and dealt with self-harming for like nine years. And so I know what it's like to completely self-destruct. And I think the difference between me and someone else is the vice that we choose to get through it. And sometimes the things we go through in life are too heavy and too dark to bear on our own. And we just turn to things to feel better. And so sometimes, a lot of the times, that looks like doing behaviors that the rest of society is going to shun you for. And unfortunately... TV shows exist to further exploit that pain. pain. That is my view of Dr. Phil. You can act my bestie Jules. I have very strong feelings about him. I don't like the man at all. Like if I ever see him to his face, I probably would punch him. I don't like him at all. Um, <laughs> I, that's my perspective. I, I would never wish harm on anyone. I would never fight with anyone. So I did not hear that. No, 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 no. <laughs> I feel very strongly I about that. I don't like exploiting traumas. And I think that a lot of the people that go up on that show need a legitimate therapy session that shouldn't, it, it just bothers me. So anyway, um, I wonder, you know, as you're saying all of these severely traumatizing things and painful things that you've been through, it puts a lot into context as to if anything on that show was legit. It explains, you know what I'm saying? And I think you shouldn't be judged for it to begin with, but especially anyone hearing your life after wife swap no one should ever judge anything you did after that because what the fuck carrying all that pain as a young woman holy shit dude how'd you do it 
Um, so do you want to speak to Dr. Phil, like how you ended up on that show and whether or not that was another wife swap, everything's fake? Um, they contacted us and they were like, we know you're on wife swap. There was the legal issues, etc. This will give you a platform to set the record straight. I'm like, you know what? We've been through living hell and back. Let's do it. I have nothing to lose. Let's go. Let's do it. I mean, how much worse could it be after that? I mean, could it be any much worse? I don't think so. Um, I didn't think the show actually was that bad. Mm -hmm. um, I think obviously it could have been worse. I think they didn't show me in the worst light. It wasn't that bad. They, it, it is scripted. Like, I'll give you an example. As we're in the dressing room, I'm there. Someone's doing my makeup. Someone's doing my hair. And at least you call them runners. Maybe it's a different term for it. But we'll call it runners. Yeah. People who basically, the runners, okay? Mm -hmm. Going over the script. Okay, he's going to ask you this question. How are you going to respond, Alicia? Okay, that's a good answer, but we want it more like this. Can you do it like this? Okay. Blah, blah, blah. As they're going over the script, they're doing my hair and makeup. How, okay, how did they know to reach out to you guys, though? Did you have something happen, like, in the news? Or, like, like how did... Because Dr. Phil is a very specific type of guest. So how did you end up, even end up on their radar? Um, my parents did get into some legal problems. Okay. That I'm not going to talk about nor disclose. Okay. Um, that, that lot of... Oof, that, that was crazy. More trauma for you there, I'm sure. You can't imagine. Yeah. Um, then I was seeing a man. He was my boyfriend, actually. Mm -hmm. oh, did they just close that? No, they didn't. Uh, he was actually became a family friend. He was um, an attorney, lawyer, and he was actually helping like uh, on my dad's case. My 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 whole parents' legal problems. He was like a person actually helping okay. out, and I met him. So he became pretty much like a family friend. When I mean a family friend, um, he invited my mom, my dad, me all out for like dinner numerous times. Of uh, Fourth of July parties, everything like we it was like he was a, a family friend and became my boyfriend on again off again for almost a year, treated me perfect, and he had his. I can't I can't get into everything, but um, basically he was known for um, DWIs. Okay. D DWI's lawyer, etc. Mm -hmm. He had prior DWI's in the past, which I didn't know about. Just before the 21st birthday, all that. He took me out to dinner, drinks, all that. Now, mind you, I did not have a fake ID. He gave me the fake ID. Mm. Okay. He gave me the fake ID. He bought me all the drinks, whatnot. And he took me out for like a nice dinner, a little birthday prior to celebration mm -hmm. before being 21. And in the comments, who here has ever drank without being of age? Anyone ever drink under yeah, age? girl. Anyone? <laughs> Probably I'm everybody in the comments, yeah. And if you haven't, that's good. Don't drink until you're 21 and up. Um, but basically, he took me out like nothing. I'm... Literally, we had food after the whole dinner. We had we had drinks. Da da da. We went to another bar, had some more drinks. We had food in the car uh, to go back to my mom. We we're gonna bring my mom. We had a whole uh, his chicken parm dinner. I remember that chicken parm dinner to bring back to my mom. And I said, "Okay, take me home. I'm drunk, <laughs> you know." 
I was so intoxicated. I fell asleep in the car. I was like this. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, he was so intoxicated. I didn't realize how intoxicated he was. All of a sudden, beep, beep. You hear those big semi horns. Mm. Semi horns and two semis coming right at us. I'm like half asleep. I open my eyes and I'm like, I'm going to die. Was he driving? Yeah, yeah. I, I so, well, yeah. So no. he was. So he was drunk. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I shut my eyes. I was like, I'm waiting for the impact in my head. I was, I, just, I was over. And uh, I felt a swerve in the road. And then I shut my eyes. Yeah, I thought we crashed. Like in my head, I, I'm mm-hmm. thinking something happened. And all of a sudden, I hear pounding on the window. Mm-hmm. Is the state troopers? And I look to the left. He's not in the car. He was in the police car screaming, ah, you know, da, da, da. but you couldn't hear what you tell he's screaming, you know, you tell he's screaming. And the state troopers open the door, etc. What's your name? Because he had it, because he always let me use the fake ID, which is one of his secretary's ID, mind you. It was his secretary's ID. He had me memorize that name, like cold. Alicia, what's the name? What's the name? What's the name? What's the name? And I said, I'm da da da. No, no, I, I'm, I'm Alicia Safira. You know, I immediately, immediately corrected myself. Well, say I reached for my purse. No, no, don't touch your purse. Okay. The, the cop took my purse. What's your name? I said the fake name. Said, no, no, I immediately corrected myself. And then they put me in the cop car, whacked my head going in. I mean, whacked my head going in. And I'm sitting there crying. I just want my mom. I just want my mom. Please let me call. Let me call. I, I, I really am. I don't know if they carried me in. I, do, I really want to know what happened. I have no recall. I blacked out. Wow. And I woke up. And it's a silver metal type table and a wobbly type chair. My, they had me, I uncuffed behind the chair with my hands and I kept tightening the handcuffs and I kept dozing off. That's how intoxicated I was. And I kept like slamming their head, their hand on the table. Wake up, Alicia, wake up, Alicia. I'm a like, cop doing that. Huh? Yeah, mm. like an as interrogation, that sounds so messed up. One second. Thank you, and uh, uh, and they said, um, you know, they asked me questions. I didn't even know what the hell I was saying. And at the time, when my parents had such legal problems, I I had to choose either basically, okay. I got into, I, I got into, I was really smart. I graduated high school, everything. I had the choice. I either could have been a dental hygienist or went to UB Dental. That was the game plan. That was the goal. And after my parents had the legal problems, I could not afford college. Mm. And either... I could have went to college, took out school loans, or, and have to work and do college, or have my parents lose everything that they worked their entire life for. So what did you do? I chose to help out my family. Okay, mm-hmm. I worked literally six to seven days um, in the bars and the clubs, literally anywhere from eight to 10, 14 hours. Like I would get there at like 12, say 11.30 a.m. to 4 to four a.m. the clubs would close the whole time. I yeah. stay there and work. And Tommy at home would be almost five in the morning. And they asked, where did you work? I said the place I worked. Mm-hmm. Oh, so you're this. I'm like, what? I go, 
I'm an exotic dancer. I'm not a stripper. I hate that word. A stripper is someone who takes it home with them. Exotic dancer is someone who just goes to the club, yeah. does their job, and doesn't doesn't take it home with them. I yeah. don't take it home with them. Yeah. And I just want to preface this is a sex worker friendly page. So But I'm not. Oh, okay. Well I'm sex worker friendly. There's not. nothing I, wrong with I am yeah. not. I am I am not. Okay. I was a dive dancer. That's it. I never brought it home with me. And then they go, what do you do for work? Wait, would you not, you would not consider exotic dancing as part of sex work? Is that what you're saying? No. It's exotic form of entertainment. Gotcha. Okay. Big difference. Um, Okay. They asked where I worked. Okay. Oh, so you're a stripper. No, I'm a exotic dancer. And well, how much you make a night? I said, how much I made a night? In the clubs, dancing legally sure. is a major difference. Yeah. Major difference. But when you're there for over 10 hours a night, I'd hope you make that good of money. I mean, come on now. <laughs> okay. And they go, okay, he's this age, you're that age. You work at a club, you make that a night. Oh, you see how they got twisted real quick? Yeah. They assumed process. So they assumed you were escorting. They, yeah, I am not. I never have, never will. Okay. Never will. That's disgusting. If you do it, good for you. Not my choice. Bless you. But they switched that whole thing around. They feel because if someone's older and someone's younger, it's not okay sure and they just assume the worst but even though they know the fact that he's my on again off again boyfriend for almost a year so with your parents legal trouble that and then paired that with now what looks like on your criminal record at the time was escorting i have no right now i'm sorry i have no charges on me Mm -hmm. those are all they were dropped all false accusations, everything was dropped. I want to clear that up. Mm-hmm. Um, and the little so-called, they called drugs, which were not drugs. They were not drugs. They were my prescription medicine in my purse. Mm-hmm. Only reason why that it was bad, because I, I did not, I know this now, Apparently, you have a controlled substance, legally prescribed, if you legally sure. prescribe um, to a person, you have to have it in the controlled bottle. I honestly, I didn't know that. Okay. My mom didn't know that either because she yeah, literally said, like, hey, I had a night, I said, night medicine. I, I'm on no medicine anymore. I overcame so much. I'm not even on medicine anymore. That's how yeah. clear thinking I am. Well, no philosophy here either. So if there's anyone watching that does need psychotropic medication to get through whatever they have going on in their mind, there's nothing wrong with that. I just wanted to there's, nothing that wrong there. With, there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. If you need to get the help you need, please go seek help. You know, don't, don't not seek help. Get help. There's people out there to help you. There is. Um, and that's why I went to a psychiatrist. I went to counseling. I, they put me on antidepressants and et cetera, on anxiety. They were all controlled substances. And for the night, my night dose, whatnot, my mom packed in my purse, like, okay, at least you're going out. Don't bring bottles with you here. Almost put it in little mint containers. So just, you know, take one. Didn't even think. And they assumed, oh, drugs. But those were all dropped too. We showed the bottles. It was all dismissed. Okay. Um, the only thing they little charge that is actually expunged. I have no charge, guys, it's expunged. Mm-hmm. Um for my record was the having a fake ID. <laughs> okay, so then with all of that with all that being falsified, all the charges are dropped, why would you be comfortable going on Dr. Phil when the whole storyline for you being on there was that you were like this troubled reality teen and you had a drug problem if that wasn't even like that seems like something really intense. To put on yourself, especially since you, you know, experienced backlash of lying on reality yeah. TV in the past, right? So like, never they bring it to that extreme. I'm like, wait, what? 
But it, you didn't know. Lose. So what did they tell you you were going to be on Dr. Phil for? Because Dr. Phil's not a feel-good show. The people who go on Dr. Phil have, like, these, like, serious behavioral and addiction another thing, issues. So we never, I never seen the Dr. Phil show before. Right. But when you went on there, went on. did they, what did they tell you? We're having you on here to talk about what they tell you. Um, to kind of set the record straight with white swab and the alleged charges. Alleged charges. So you, in your mind, you're going there to clear the air and talk yes. about how, what really happened. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you see how that got totally twisted though? Sure. Like, really it's like twisted. white swab all over again. Yes, it was, but I felt more in control of it to some degree. Because back, like, White Swap, I just had no say in nothing. Okay. I didn't have much say in that, though, but I still got to clear the air, I feel, a little bit. It justified in my mind a little bit. If that makes any sense. Yes. Um, wow. So then how much... Of, like, what was the experience on Dr. Phil compared to, was there a script for you to look over? Um, they had their questions, their script. They read off each question for me, and they had me respond to it in, like, the dressing room, going over it. Okay, we should watch answers a little bit more like this. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. And um, it is what it is. You know? Wow. So then I'm, how did the show end? Did they send, try to, because with Dr. Phil and I didn't see the show in its entirety, I figured you would be the one to tell the story. So did they send you to rehab or something like they normally no, do? I, I didn't need rehab. Sure. I was on prescribed medicine. Um, I didn't need prescribed medicine. They did nothing. I didn't even, they didn't give me his, they didn't even give me, oh, I'm going to give you the book. You didn't give me the book. They didn't do anything like, for you. They didn't, they didn't give me nothing. Yeah. Was he, um, I'm curious, just like his personality, was he nice on camera? And then when the cameras went off, he just like ignored you? Like, what was he like? Is he authentic? Um, he, I, he wasn't the worst. He really wasn't that bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He was a little bit harder on my mom, but he wasn't the worst. Yeah. From the clips I did see, he did, it looked like he was trying to, or, uh, you know, what he was blaming your mom for, because you can be prescribed medication and it can rightfully legally be yours and still abuse it. Like, that's a really, really big epidemic never, in this country, especially. Ever. Sure, but I guess that's like what the story they were trying to tell. So I guess the reason why he went in on your mom was because, like, probably blaming her for. Reviews and ratings. Mm -hmm. So make it whoa. No. Yeah. Wow, I just I just find it so interesting that you guys would go on a show like that. I guess you were hoping to clear the air, and then you were just I guess blindsided. Um, wow. So what what was the backlash from going on that show? Did you experience anything like it was with Wife Swap or? It wasn't as bad, but some of the bars I actually worked in there like I'm sorry we can't have you work here I go what are you serious right now no like I was supporting my mom dad my mom's business and and myself and I was I took care of everything financially I'm like are you serious right now so I just had to do like multiple uh, bars like afternoon shift this bar Night shift this bar as jump around bars. Like, wow. That's a big change so. from, you know, um, not being financially responsible as a child and then being thrust into being responsible for everything and everyone. That's a lot on one person. I'm sorry you had to experience that. It's a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Are you doing okay? Yeah. Okay. Is there anything else that you want to, um, add or clear the air about as far as like scandals or rumors with Dr. Phil and stuff before we, we jump forward to talking about what you were up to these days, something a little more lighthearted. Um, bottom line is, guys, there's really no reality on reality TV. Don't judge a book by its cover. And guys,
guys, don't be a bully because it really, it doesn't make you cool. It doesn't make you popular. Cutting down another human individual really only makes yourself sadder. Yeah. Don't hurt another human individual, especially if they are nothing to you, nor if you know them. And, uh, yeah. Beautifully said. So um, before we switch to talking about your current projects and your current life and, and how you, you know, um, came to be this positive person, I, I just want to speak to the people who are watching. We've had some pretty intense topics come up, PTSD, bullying, um, drug abuse, mental health disorders. And so if anyone has been triggered, please check in with yourself, um, check in with each other in the comments. I love all of you guys and I appreciate everyone for being here and commenting in and, you know, participating in Alicia telling her story. And I just want to reiterate to anyone watching, if hearing or seeing someone else in pain is bringing up things for you, therapy is your best friend. If you have the money or access or resources to it, I highly, highly, highly recommend. The link in my bio, if you go to my website, I actually have a whole list of mental health resources as well that you guys can tap into if anyone else is struggling emotionally, just, you know, hearing these things, because this is a pretty, it's real, you know, this is humanity, this is someone being very honest and raw and vulnerable with us, and we thank her for that, and so I also know that if you have experienced anything similar to what she's gone through, it can also be hard um, to listen to, so I don't want to trigger anyone and just make sure everyone's okay, and then I also want to thank you again, Alicia, for being so honest and vulnerable with us about your pain and letting us see this side of you and I hope that you can engage in some self-care and aftercare after such an intense thing um, bringing up all your most awful memories and so however you cope whether it's dancing writing a song checking in with your family if you have a therapist scheduling an extra session do what you got to do to take care of yourself because um, it is a lot reliving stuff I, I know it for uh, from personal experience it's not it, easy it's to get still... up here and tell your story it's not, it's not, but like, it's still the end of the day, I'm like, I look back at it, I'm like, get that fuck out of here. I don't say, get the fuck, that's not me. That, no, that, that could not happen. No, no, that can't be real. It doesn't feel real. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't believe that's my life. I'm like, mm -hmm. I would watch that. I'd watch it like, damn, mm -hmm. ooh, wow. I, I'd probably watch it. I would never something say something rude. I just would probably watch it. Wow. That's, that's Wow. Oh, my God. I can't believe that's my life. I'm so, like, like, it's like watching a movie of someone's life. I'm like, my life, and there's so much more I cannot talk about. I was just on NDA, et cetera, and more. <laughs> but um, my life is a lifetime movie. It truly is. And you know, if they did ask me for, for a tell all book, I would do it. Um, you should. A movie, I would do it. A reality show, let's do it. Yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. I totally would do it. So let's bring it to present day. What are you up to these days? What's your life look the like? What's to come? I, if you don't know, ladies and gentlemen, hi, I really am Alicia G, or Alicia G World, all my social media. I am Alicia Estefero. I am the princess of pageantry, the girl from White Swap. What am I doing now? This is what I'm doing now. I am a live streamer on the app Be Live. I am a social media influencer, and I love what I do. I am one of the top streamers in all of North America. I've had I have over 2.77 million followers on View Live, and I've been there exactly two and a half years. And I love what I do, right. and I even brought one of the Beagle Live trophies. That's so cute! What's that little mascot? Uh, it's the little Beagle Live Dino. Adorable. So, is this like a app, kind of like Twitch or something, where you go live and people can uh, tune in? Similar. Similar to it, very similar. And uh, I actually was even on the ABC Super Sign in Times Square, my picture, being one of the top streamers in all of North America. 
Cool. And I still am till this day and one of the top streamers in all North America and have the most fans in all North America. And I am a live streamer and I love what I do. And besides that, if you're in the house, AG Army, boom, boom, baby. I love you guys. AG Army, as we call my fans, my supporters. AG Army? Um, AG Army. That's cute. Guys, join our army. Yeah, AG Army. Welcome aboard. Boom, boom, baby. And boom, boom, baby. That's the saying, the motto of AG Army. Boom, boom, baby. Let's go. And uh, I love it. I love everything. I love people I've met, the friends I met, the fans, supporters are amazing. I could not do it without each and every one of you. And I can't tell you how much you all mean to me. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. And I appreciate each and every one of you. I love you guys. That's beautiful. I could not do it without each and every one of you. And besides the live streaming, well, I also DJ, but I also, what you guys really know me for, I also sing. I sing a pop hip hop genre. We are actually transitioning more into a country, um, country pop, country hip hop genre. We will be in the new year, 2022. Mm -hmm. But I uh, yes. Where can people hear your music? Anywhere music sold or streamed around the world. So if they look up and Alicia G, it'll come up. Is that your artist Alicia? name? Yes, Alicia G from Spotify, Pandora, Apple Music, Google Play, and more. Awesome. Check out my music. And hashtag in a circle challenge. Tag me. Use the official song in a circle. Do the challenge, guys. What's my the hashtag song. so people can know? Hashtag in a circle I'll challenge. I'll put it in the comments. Challenge? In a circle challenge. Okay. Use my sound. Tag me. And so tag me, use my sound. Sorry, I'm trying to use the hat. I'm like fucking up the thing. Okay. Do the challenge and uh, you tag me, do the challenge, hash, use the hashtag. I will feature you on my Instagram story. And the top one of the week or bi weekly will be on my YouTube short. So make it good. Use the hashtag. And tag me. on Instagram is your Alicia. I'm assuming your Alicia G rolled across the board. Everywhere. Yeah, that should be easy for people to find. I do see some comments of people asking about um, what kind of content Check you should. Check out the new music video in a circle on my YouTube channel, guys. Check it out. The YouTube channel, Alicia G World. Comment, like, subscribe, guys. Perfect. Um, it, to bring it back to Bego really quick, um, people are asking what kind of content you stream. So if people, you know, you want to add some fans to that big base you got, can, what can people expect if they decide to download the app? Um, you get to know the real me. You get to know me, the real me. Um, I always provide a safe place of no bullying, positivity, no negativity allowed. Um, I be singing some original songs. I'm dancing. Uh, talking to everyone occasionally I'll DJ once twice a month do a nice big vlog performance we all get litty juicy bossy and big delicious nice. each and every day and just experience positivity uh, dancing having fun and bring joy and positivity to each and every one of you beautiful making you smile beautiful love it um so it's like just yeah hanging out with good vibes it sounds similar to the TikTok lives that we do over here um, okay, is there anything else before we wrap that you want people to know about you, your projects, anything else? If you guys want a shout out, you can get a shout out on Cameo, C A M E O. I love Cameo. Um, it's a very cool thing. Yeah, people who don't know what Cameo is, like you can um, hire people to give like personalized videos. So, like, I gave my best friend. Um, a shout out from someone from the Wu-Tang Clan like that the app has everybody it's really cool so if you want a personalized thing from Alicia she's on there it's usually like a video yes exactly uh, short little video birthday shout outs uh, motivational little things stuff like that um, oh also I do a weekly show on Beagle Live called Spill the Tea with 
Alicia G, where I have one featured guest once a week. Either they are um, an official host on Vigo Live, mm -hmm. or there was something to do with the entertainment field of some sort from music, social media, etc., and more. So it's an hour show once a week, every Thursday, 7 o'clock p.m. PST, Standard Time. So be sure to check it out. And I upload those shows weekly to my YouTube channel. And on my YouTube channel also, between the music videos, um, little videos of vlogs, blogs, whatever you call them, um, from creating my broadcasting streaming room to behind the scenes of my music videos, creating the music videos, to the music videos itself, you can see, uh, to calendar, photo shoots, etc., and more. So be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the bell for notifications, and uh, all social media, Alicia G World. Check out my website, www.aliciagworld.com. Let's do all social media, merchandise, music, and more. Amazing. Tons of and stuff. You can also check video. out the link in her bio um, if you guys go to her page. Okay. Yes. Well, thank you so much uh, for anyone who came in late or had to duck out in and out. Uh, this whole interview will be available on both of our YouTube channels. So uh, hit the links in our bios, subscribe, hit the notifications so you know it'll be up for sure tomorrow. Um, and I'll thank you so much, too. Alicia, for your time and for your honesty and vulnerability and for sharing your story with us. We really appreciate it. And thank you, Chelsea, for having me. And thank you for giving me this opportunity. At first, when I see all those clips, I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God, it's happening again. But you're very sweet, and I appreciate the kindness You're welcome. and hospitality you can. I really do. You're Plus welcome. You and your family. I hope this will I curb some of the backlash and you won't have a repeat of what happened in the 2000s. This will be a totally different experience for you. I hope so. So I really do. Be sure to her, follow me, follow our TikToks. I, I do a lot of good quality content. I mean, I mean, I always have the perfect dances on TikTok, but... I try my best. Like I have fun with it. You guys have fun in life. Yeah. You know? Kind of, subscribe sure. to my TikTok. Follow me. My Instagram post every single day. My YouTube channel once or twice a week or more. And uh, do a live too. All this you world. And I appreciate each and every one of you. And AG Army in the house. I love you guys. And once again, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Yay. Jessica. Okay. Have a great night, Alisa. We'll talk soon. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. Let me see.